Working with photographs in Adobe Premiere Pro gives you a lot of opportunities for creativity. Of course, you can create amazing slideshows, but you can also bring your images to life with movement, panning across them, and even zooming in to show greater detail. These visual techniques are sometimes referred to as the Ken Burns effect. To follow along, copy the files that accompany this tutorial to your Creative Cloud account. It's important to understand that high-def TV is not as high-def as one might think. Most DSLR cameras these days have sensors that can capture 20 to 24 megapixels. A 24 megapixel image is 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. High-def TV resolution is only 1,920 by 1,080 pixels, or roughly 2 megapixels. Think about it. If you bring in full-resolution photos into Premiere Pro, you're making your computer do 12 times the amount of work it needs to for each frame of video. Another issue is that most DSLRs capture images with an aspect ratio of either 3x2 or 4x3. The aspect ratio of HDTV is 16x9, which means when you add a photo to your video, you will need to crop off the top and bottom or have black bars on the sides. Though you can crop and scale an image in Premiere Pro, it is sometimes easier to do this in Photoshop and Lightroom. Both Lightroom and Photoshop have 16x9 presets when using the crop tool. This can be very useful if you want to be very precise about what part of your photograph you want to be in your video. You can also export your images at precisely 1920 by 1080 pixels, so they fit perfectly into your HDTV frame. When exporting an image for video, you can ignore PPI as it has no relevance for screen viewing. It's a print parameter, and it goes without saying, though I'm saying it, TVs are horizontal when cropping and exporting its landscape, not portrait. Now, if you plan to zoom in on or pan over your image, you should export your photographs at a higher resolution than 1920 by 1080 to maintain sharpness after you zoom in. Depending on how much you plan to zoom in, here are some examples of recommended resolutions. Though Premiere Pro works with most of the common image formats, it does not support camera raw images. So converting all of your images to JPEG or TIFF files is recommended. TIFF files are dramatically larger than JPEGs and can cause playback stutter during editing if you have an older computer, if it has less RAM, or your hard drive is slow. JPEGs work much better and the quality difference is usually imperceptible in your finished video. Once your images are prepared, you can import them through the Media Browser panel. You can determine the playback duration of each images in your Preferences. In Windows, this is under the Edit menu. Go to Preferences, General, Still Image Default Duration. Out of the box, the default duration is 5 seconds, which means that each of your photos will be 5 seconds long after it's imported. But this preset duration is only a starting point. You can easily change the duration of any still image even after you place it in a sequence. The best rule of thumb is to set the default duration to the average length you think you want your images to be on screen. This could be 2 seconds for a sports slideshow or 10 seconds for a wedding video. Once your photos have been imported, you need to create a slideshow sequence to edit them into. To do this, go to File, New, Sequence or press Command N or Control N. In the pop-up under Sequence Presets, choose Digital SLR, 1080p, 1080p30. This is the standard for most HD video. You can now drop your photos into the sequence. Double-click to the left of the video track to increase its height. If you have already cropped and scaled the images down to 1920 by 1080, they should fit perfectly into the frame of your sequence. However, if they are at a higher resolution than 1920 by 1080, they will appear cropped. You'll see only the center portion of your images when you play back the sequence in the program panel. To fix this, right-click on an image in the timeline and select Set to Frame Size. This will fit the entire image into the frame, yet still preserve the original pixel resolution of the image. So, if you zoom in on an image, it will still be sharp. 
You can even select multiple clips or all the clips in your timeline to select them all, Command or Control A, and right click. Now, if you did not change the aspect ratio to exactly 16 by 9, then you may see black bars at the sides or at the top and bottom of the screen. Premiere Pro does this so that no picture information is unnecessarily cropped out. Now that you know how to import photos into Premiere Pro and place them on the timeline, you're ready to start animating them with pans and zooms. Position the playhead over the clip you want to animate. There's a great feature in Premiere Pro that automatically selects the clip that your playhead is positioned above. Though I don't have it active all the time, it's very useful when animating a photo. To activate it, look under the Sequence drop-down menu and make sure Selection Follows Playhead is checked. We will be working in the Effects Control tab, which can be found in the upper left quadrant of the interface. Click on it to make it active. Underneath the Motion Disclosure triangle, you will find controls for position and scale. If you click and hold with your mouse on a number, the number acts as a slider that will change as you move your mouse left or right. If you click and let go, the number is selected and you can enter a specific value. As you can see, by adjusting these settings, your image scales and moves. To reset the position and scaling effects, well, actually any parameter, to the default settings, click on the counterclockwise circular arrows to the right of the numbers. In the case of scale, that will be back to 100%. I want the oversized image to fit, so instead I'm going to simply undo my previous adjustments. Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on Windows. You can also reposition and scale your image directly in the program panel. If you click on the small square icon to the left of the word Motion, a bounding box will appear around your image. You can grab the corner or edge of the image and scale it up or down, and grab anywhere inside the bounding box to reposition your image. If you have an unusually large image and need to see and work outside the video frame, you can modify the viewing zoom level in the lower left corner of the program panel, enabling you to see the parts of the image that extend outside the original viewing area. Now suppose you want to animate this image over time, say starting in a close-up and zooming out to reveal the entire image. Effect properties can be animated by assigning keyframes to them. A keyframe locks in specific parameters, in this case scale and position, at a specific point along your timeline. To create a change over time, you need to set at least two keyframes. One keyframe for how things look at the beginning of the change, and another for how things look at the end of the change. Premiere Pro then animates smoothly from one keyframe to another. To create a zoom or pan on one of your photographs, simply move the playhead to the point along your timeline where you want the move to start. Let's move the playhead to about one second in and adjust the scale and position of the image to the way you want to see it at the beginning of the move. To create our first keyframe and lock the image into our starting position, we need to click on the small stopwatch icons to the left of the position and scale sliders. You will see small diamonds appear to the right directly under the playhead. Now, move the playhead to the right towards the end of the clip. As you move the playhead in the timeline, you will see the playhead in the effects control panel also move. Once you have created your first keyframe for a specific parameter, in our case scale and position, every time you make an adjustment to that parameter, another keyframe is automatically created. The trick is to position the playhead first, then adjust scale and position. Let's play back the clip to view our animation. You can change the timing of the animation by repositioning any of the keyframes in the Effect Controls tab. To remove a keyframe, simply right-click on it and select Clear. To delete all the keyframes for a single parameter, click on the stopwatch again. You will get a dialog box warning you that you will be deleting existing keyframes. Now, let's use these skills to create an animation across a panorama 
of the New York City skyline. Prior to importing, I scaled this image in Photoshop to 1080 pixels high to match the height of my HD video frame. However, it's a little over 4,600 pixels wide, about two and a half times the width of a normal HD frame. When I drop it into my timeline, it fits perfectly at 100% height-wise. I want to pan from left to right. So, select the clip, move the playhead to the beginning of the clip, and drag the horizontal positioning slider until you can see the bounding box at the edge of the frame. Click on the stopwatch to create the first keyframe. Now, move the playhead to the end of the clip. Drag the horizontal slider to move the image all the way to the left so that the far right edge touches the frame. A new keyframe is automatically created for the end position. Let's play it back. I like it, but the pan seems a little fast. Five seconds is not a lot of time for such a wide image. So grab the edge of the clip in the timeline and stretch it out so it runs for 50 seconds. In the effects control panel, you can see that the second keyframe is still only five seconds past the first. All you need to do is grab the second keyframe and drag it to the right edge. Let's play it back. Now the pan is nice and slow. The first couple of times you try to use keyframes to animate one of your photographs, you'll probably be a little frustrated. You may forget to reposition the playhead or create many extra keyframes and your image will jump all over the place. Don't worry. Eventually, you'll have that aha moment and from then on, it's clear sailing.